Okay, today uh, today we're going to be talking about running uh, underground direct berry polyethylene gas piping. Before we get started with that, just a couple of quick things. One being, uh, you'll notice that on this polyethylene tubing, it shows the diameter. This happens to be half-inch CTS, and it has an 090 wall. Okay, All of the tubing will be marked with a diameter and a wall thickness, or what's known as an SDR, or dimensional ratio number. So if you already have existing pipe, can you use the risers, the continental risers we have? The answer is yes. You just need to verify that the numbers on the tube match that of the riser. The risers will also be marked. So as long as it's marked and the numbers coincide, you can use our pipe with other risers, other risers with our pipe. They're interchangeable. Uh, now with that being said, we'll move forward to the actual uh, assembly procedures few things you're going to need to do it. Uh, one's going to be a cutter, a polyethylene cutter. The other will be a, a magic marker to make a mark on the tube. And most important is a chamfer tool. And you need to use the chamfer tool by Continental when we're doing Continental risers. Uh, the reason being is some manufacturers have an inside diameter chamfer, some have an outside diameter chamfer, and uh, Continental's happens to be an ID. Uh, on the back side, you'll notice of the chamfer bag that it actually gives you instructions uh, on how to do the procedure, on how to assemble a uh, poly pipe and a riser. In addition to that, the, uh, the riser itself, when you get the riser, and this would go for any diameter riser or a coupling uh, or a T, they come bagged, and that bag also has assembly instructions on it. So it'll tell you how to assemble the riser uh, or the coupling right on the bag. So a couple of the key points, again, are going to be the actual chamfering of the tubing. This is a double-ended, so one side does one-inch copper tube size, the other side does half-inch copper tube size. So to begin with, uh, once you're where you need to be, the trench is dug, you want to have kind of a, uh, you know, a clean place where you can work, a piece of cardboard or whatever. The riser has inside you'll see there's a stiffener and there's also grease so if this were to drop into the sand or the dirt you run the risk of potentially having a leak so try to keep the parts out of the sand uh, when they're unbagged uh, before you make the assembly try to keep them clean and set aside so we're working on this little piece of, of cardboard right here we're going to take a simple poly cutter and just cut the tubing and all we're looking to do is get a clean, straight cut, okay, which we have right there. There's a nice, clean, straight cut on the poly pipe. And now we're going to chamfer it. Again, we're using the Continental Chamfer Tool. And if you notice, it also, on the chamfer tool, it's giving you a direction. So it's telling you specifically which way to turn. So we're going to chamfer the pipe. You can see the shaving coming out right there. Now the other portion is uh, is marking the stab depth. So while we have it in inserted in the chamfer tool, because of the depth arrangement, we can actually take a marker and just put a mark on the pipe. And what that's going to do is tell us, once we've inserted the pipe, into the coupling or into the riser uh, it lets us know that we've actually stabbed that fitting in deep enough to engage it. So I believe it's uh, there could be just a little bit showing before that but it should be buried almost up to that line completely. The other way to do it is if we had just a coupling and I apologize let me spin this riser around. If we had just a coupling the other way to do it would be to take the tube and lay it down against, you'll notice there's a definitive ridge in the middle of that riser's coupling. All the couplings will have it. If you put the pipe up against that ridge and then make a mark where the coupling ends and you'll see that mark already lines up, that is another way of marking the pipe with regard to stab depth. So once you, if you don't do it when you've got the chamfer tool in it, another way to do it is to use the actual coupling itself and mark the stab depth. So We've taken and, and we've cut the tube, we've, we've marked it, we're just going to take a rag real quick and wipe it so that we're clean. And now it's as easy as 
stabbing it in. So the stiffener is inside. We're going to get it lined up over the stiffener and then just simply push it in and that's it. Now if you'll notice you can see the mark is right on the end of that riser coupling so it's fully engaged. At that point now it's safe we can now pick up the riser set it in the ditch and begin the berry process. Okay uh, with regard to berry depth we're not actually showing the trench on this but with regard to berry depth you're going to need to refer to your local code requirements uh, codes vary all across the United States. Anywhere from 12 to 24 inches is common for berry depth on gas piping. Uh, you'll notice this riser here is actually marked with a max berry depth. It is set for, uh, this is set for a 24 inch, uh, 24 inch berry depth. It's a 30 inch vertical riser. So uh, once again, though, refer to local code and verify what the berry depth is for the gas piping system. One more thing we're going to talk about uh, is marking or locating. Magnetic tape or locating tape is one means of, uh, of locating underground gas piping as is uh, copper locating wire. Uh, at gas tight we don't handle copper locating wire. You can purchase that locally. We do have the mag tape uh, which again says caution uh, gas line buried below. So one or the other is going to need to be buried with the gas pipe. You don't want that locating tape or the wire to touch the gas piping when it's in the ditch.